I'm going to go over the tools to manage and evaluate diet. This is module two in your textbook and what we're going to discuss is information that's found that will help you to determine what is the best way to make decisions on your diet. And I'm also going to give you information that will help you with your diet project that's due later in the semester. Um, on the left here you can see what the recommendations were between 1956 and 19, during the 1970s, the daily food guide. On the right is kind of an assessment of what folks were eating during the depression. Pretty low on vegetables and fruit, pretty high on protein. There's a lot more information in module two than what we're going to cover, but this is what I want you to know, what we're covering here. Please feel free to read whatever you want that's in the book and beyond. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, I'm interested. I'm going to cover nutrient labels, alphabet soup, my plate, and the exchanges. And again, within this information will be reference materials and information that you can use for your diet analysis project. Under nutrient labels, we'll look at the anatomy of the food label, the daily values, how to assess fat content, nutrient density, I'll explain what that is. If you're watching the calories in your diet, nutrient density is important. And we'll look at how the ingredients on a food label are listed, as well as some of the terms that can be found on food labels. I'm going over the nutrient facts panel that's usually found, if you're looking, say, at a box of cereal on the side. Foods that contain more than one ingredient are required to display this panel and there's specific information that's required. I'm going to ask you in class what it is that you look at when you're food shopping and looking at food labels. One of the things I hear from students is after they take this class they take a lot more time to go food shopping because they look at food labels. Up here at the top is the serving size and in my opinion it's the most important thing on the food label and we'll talk about why. Then you have the calories calories from fat. These percentages here are the percent daily value shown how the food fits into the overall diet and I'll talk about where these numbers come from. On the left are the different nutrients, fat, total fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium. This is four nutrients, two vitamins and two minerals that have been shown to be most likely to be lacking in diet of today's consumers and so they show you in the particular product that you're looking at, how much of that nutrient you get. However, they show it in terms of a percentage, and what I'll do is show you how you calculate, take that percentage and calculate it into grams or milligrams. And this will be helpful for some of you if you use food labels for your diet project. These, this DV label here, percent daily values, the numbers, the percentages are based on 2,000 calories. Uh, your needs may vary. And if you are somebody who consumes an average of 2,500 calories or more per day, uh, I'd like you to make sure that you use these numbers when you do your diet project and just let me know that this is how you're basing your information. So the DRVs, these numbers are based on current recommendation. So if it's currently recommended that we get 30%, in this case, 29% of our calories from fat. I think they went with these numbers because it, it looked nicer. 29% of 2,000 calories turns out to be 65 grams a day. A third of fat calories should come from saturated fat. So here is where 9% or 20 grams comes from. Cholesterol is recommended to be 300 milligrams Carbohydrate, if 60% of your calories are supposed to come from carbohydrate, 60% of 2,000 is 1,200 calories. And if we divide 1,200 calories by 4, which is how many calories you get in a gram of carb, that's where the 300 comes from, and so on. This will be your reference table for when you're doing your diet project. Foods can be classified according to fat content. Things can be high fat, moderately fat, or low fat. Foods don't usually label themselves as high fat though, so we'll talk about what they need in order to be labeled low fat, and generally that's less than 25% of their calories from fat. This can also be applied to diets. We all know there are high fat diets, high carb diets, low fat diets, low carb diets. So how do you calculate percent fat by calories? 
This is the formula that you use, and let's put that into practice. If you're looking at a particular label, in this case peanuts, if the serving size is a third of a cup in shells, the total calories are 150. According to this part of the label, the fat calories are 100. But as we'll see shortly, it's not always the case. We're going to use this number here, 12 grams of total fat. We take that 12 grams of fat, multiply it by 9 calories per gram of fat, and we get 108 calories that come from fat. We divide that 108 by the total number of calories in the serving. So we have 108 fat calories divided by 150 total calories times 100, and that gives us 72%. So 72% of the calories in a serving of a third of a cup of shelled peanuts comes from fat. So we would classify peanuts as a high fat food. Not really a surprise. But let's say you want to calculate the percent of fat by weight or by volume. Say you've been buying lots of frozen yogurt because it says it's 97% fat free and that sounds like a really good deal. They must be using skim milk in order to be able to have that label as 97% fat free. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's dissect that information. My apologies for the fuzzy label, but what I want you to look at if we're looking at fat, we have 8 grams of fat. That's what you want to look at, and you want to look at the serving size. In this case, one, one cup or 240 mils. For our purposes, we're going to say that mils is equal to grams in order to calculate that percentage. So we have 8 grams of fat divided by 240 grams in a serving. Multiply that by 100 for the percentage, and we get 3.3% of the calories in a cup of milk, of whole milk, comes from fat, which makes whole milk, by the way, 96.7% fat free. So when you see this number, whole milk is 96.7% fat free by weight, not by calories. Your 97% fat free yogurt is not calorie free. It has the same amount of calories, the same amount of fat that's found in whole milk. Maybe that's why you're not losing weight with all the frozen yogurt you've been eating.